So my fury with Canada Post as of this morning has subsided because they did manage to drop off my helmet to the local post office, which frankly isn't that close to our office. It's like, ah, it's a good 10, 15 minute drive and you know, whatever. Anyway, I don't care. My helmet is here, which means I can ride my bike this weekend and that is all that matters. Yes, I had to take off from the office for uh, about 40 minutes to go pick it up, but my boss will never know unless he watches this video, in which case he will know. So, whatever. All right, well, there's my invoice. So as you can see, helmets are quite expensive. This is a showy RF 1100 monolith helmet. So the color I got is TC5, and you'll see the design on it in a few minutes here. But um, you know what? There really isn't. Uh, there really isn't a price when it comes to protecting your head. So uh, I went with whatever fit. I did try on quite a few different brands of helmets. I didn't go straight for the showy because they are pretty expensive. But um, you have to find something that A, comes in a size that fits you really snug, and B, has a shape that's appropriate for your head. So there's the cheek pads, and you know what, why don't we, we'll put on the helmet and I'll explain the fit as we do that. So it just comes in a, in a plain box, uh, it's for safety evidently, okay. Uh, monolith, TC5, so it's a silver and black. I'm a size small, in case anyone was wondering, my helmet size. Uh, the fit on this helmet is actually quite similar in my experience to the Scorpion uh, XO700, and um, I believe the XO1000 uses the same shell as well. So if you fit the Showy RF1100 quite well, you'll probably also fit the Scorpion, but I didn't find a place to try on the Scorpion until I had already ordered this one. So live and learn, the Scorpion is actually a few hundred dollars cheaper, but it doesn't have quite the same technology that goes into the manufacture as, uh, as a showy helmet does. So here we are, how to use your helmet properly. There's a little manual, read it before use. It comes in a variety of different languages. There's a warning, okay, thank you for purchasing. And uh, wow, they've, okay, here, so shows you how to put it on, shows you how to check the retention strap. Okay, that's fine. And then we've got, uh, wow, more instructions. Look at that. So, oh, it shows you all the different vents. Okay, so there's lots of different vents in this helmet, and you open up the vents if you want to, well, get more ventilation. Uh, it shows you the way to use the quick release system for the visor, how to remove and fix it, uh, how to... Let me see what else. How to remove the interior. You can actually remove the entire interior of this helmet and wash it if you want. You should use shampoo to wash a helmet, not detergents, because it will be up against your hair on a fairly regular basis. Okay, how to put it back together. Installing the chin strap cover. It has a breath guard as well, so there's probably something in here about, yeah, installing the chin curtain. How to replace the lower air intake. Wow, there's, this is actually like, look at this. This is pretty in depth. It's hardcore. Okay, that's the end of the English section. All right, so that's it for the documentation. There's a couple accessories here. I wish I could tell you exactly what these are, but I'm gonna have to go through it later. This is probably sits here somewhere. And this might be a breath guard of some sort. I'm not sure. Let's just get the helmet out and then we will, we will know everything for certain at that time. So it comes in a nice little baggie, which could hold a gym strip later on down the road when you do not need to store your helmet in the baggie all the time. So yeah, it's actually kind of a nice little bag. Got a little drawstring there. And there is my helmet. So, uh, you know, why don't we just kind of look at the overall sort of fit and finish. I mean, I guess there's nothing here that's really beyond expectations. This is how most of the vents work. They're just little sliders like that, so you can either open them up or close them. Okay, so I believe the front one works in a manner that is quite similar, there you go. So you can either open that up and get some more ventilation or close it. And then there are exhaust ports in the back which you also need to open up should you require more head cooling. So, oh, let's talk about the safety, uh, safety approvals that are on here. So it's DOT, which basically means that it has passed the basic safety for helmet use in North America, but it's also approved by the Snell, I think it's the Snell Foundation or something like that. And Snell means that it meets the DOT approvals except better. So Snell is basically a tighter certification. There's also a new one that's come out, um, and that's more of a European standard, but some helmets are coming with those as well. It is made in Japan. All right, it's got the showy branding here. I, ch I chose the monolith helmet because I like the graphic on it. It's not quite all black, so it's gonna be uh, a little bit easier to see than something that's really, really dark. 
but it also has a little bit of white on it so it will be a little bit more visible. I guess I could put it on. Oh, we can check out the inside. So there's the inside. There's all the different paddings and whatnot. There's some warnings at the back. And, uh, okay, here, why don't we put it on then? Ah, we can talk a little bit about the fit as well. So, uh, there we are. So helmet should come down right to your brow pretty much. When you move it around, you should actually see the skin on your brow move. So you're not, you're not moving the helmet around on your head, you're actually moving the skin with it. That's how you know you have a snug enough fit. I hope you can hear me okay. Okay, so I'll pull that down and cameraman says yes, thank you cameraman. Also the cheek pads should be quite tight. Now bear in mind, you can buy replacement cheek pads. So if the head fits all the way around and you don't feel any pressure points with the helmet snugly down on your head, then you know you have the right fit up here. But if your cheeks are loose and you can wiggle it side to side, then what you can do is you can actually buy thicker cheek pads or if you find your face incredibly squished then you can actually get smaller ones so uh why don't we just go ahead and put that down i can't see any oh yeah you probably can't hear me when i close that i can't see anything because of the sticker but there's the helmet and uh so i am super stoked to go riding this weekend and thank you for checking out linus tech tips the cameraman is telling me to do something oh he wants me to put this down again Cameraman is uh, fascinated by the uh, springs and gears and all the different little uh, workings of the helmet on the side here for the visor. So there's a couple different features I can show you here. First of all is this one right here. So if you push it down like that, it opens up the helmet just a tiny crack. So that's for when you want just the tiniest little bit of ventilation, but you want it mostly closed, like say for example when it's raining. So then you put it back, uh, back normal and then there's actually a locking mechanism now where you can lock the helmet down into the position that it's in. So uh, I don't know if the lock actually... Yeah, yeah, that'll... Oh, no, no, it only works when it's all the way closed. So the lock only works when it's closed. And then there's the little feature to, to crack it open a little bit. So uh, there you go. That is the uh, visor feature. I haven't showed how to use the quick release because frankly, I don't know. I think it's something to do with uh, this side. But I'm sure the instructions will tell me more. Don't forget to subscribe.